Introducing the newest and most requested course from Foundry Academy, Intro to Hashboard Diagnosis and Repair, offered by the same experts who provided top technical training for mining technicians in the U.S. This Essential Academy course will take place in Rochester, New York from May 1st to the 5th, 2023. With a strong focus on mastering microsoldering basics, Foundry's dedicated instructors possess years of ASIC hardware experience and will guide you through each step of the process. They'll ensure that you gain the confidence and skills required to undertake basic repair jobs and keep your operation healthy and hashing. Register today at foundryacademy.com. Welcome back to the Mining Pod. On today's show, it's just me. Matt Kimmel is out this week. Also missed last week. We met, We both missed last week, so... Apologies for that. Busy week. Both did not have an opportunity to jump on the mic, but we are getting back to it this week with only three stories, but three pretty important stories in the Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining landscape. I'm going to start off with this headline about how there's been a Bitcoin white paper inside of every Mac OS software release since 2017. Then move over to Bloomberg, talk about how Foundry is now charging a fee for its pool services, and finish up talking about how Paxful, the peer-to-peer Bitcoin marketplace, has decided to shutter its services. Okay, starting off with this first one. Since 2017, every Mac OS software has had the Bitcoin white paper stored inside of it. It's very, very deep within uh, Mac software. So take a little bit of, of, I guess, like opening up random files for whatever reason, just to find it. This was first noticed in 2021 by a, a blog writer on a Mac OS community forum. No one really cared at the time. And then it was just pushed again by another blogger, Andy Bao, uh, on his blog, Waxy. And he noticed that if you go to open and then systems, a library, and then down a few more clicks, then you can find a document called simpledoc.pdf, which is in fact the Bitcoin white paper. Of course, this has already led to a lot of speculation. Was Tim, uh, was Steve Cook or uh, Tim Apple, as Trump put it, Satoshi Nakamoto? Probably not. But there is some fun thoughts uh, speculating around crypto, crypto Twitter right now. Another one has been that Craig Wright, who's infamously been suing anybody who's been hosting the Bitcoin white paper, uh, would not be able to go after Apple. And so a Bitcoin maximalist, perhaps working on Apple, decided to publish this within all of the different Mac OS releases from 2017 onwards in order to stop Craig Wright. So there's another fun idea there. At the very least, I think it's just cool that there's the Bitcoin white paper on every machine out there, or at least every Apple machine out there. We'll leave that story there. Let's go over to Foundry. This news broke yesterday on April 6th. We're recording this, of course, on April 7th, Friday, uh, that Foundry, the largest pool provider by hash rate, has decided to start implementing a pool fee. To date, it has not done so since it began operations in 2019. As of today, it's about 37% of all Bitcoin hash rate flows through Foundry. It has a lot of institutional clients. A lot of public miners use Foundry and they've used it because it has no fee and pretty simple interface. It's you know, pretty great to work with if you are a miner. It's also paper share. Uh, so you are, or a full paper share, I should say. So you're able to get all the Bitcoin out basically on the work that you're sending to the Bitcoin network, but they're going to start charging. This of course comes after DCG has been caught in the middle of a lot of bankruptcy stuff with Gemini and others. DCG is the owner of multiple different sister companies, including Foundry, Coindesk, Genesis, Grayscale. And Genesis itself was, uh, or it continues to be in a chapter 11 reorganization at the moment. So there might be some thoughts about why these two things are connected. As of right now, the fee earnings will be stacked based on like your hash rate contributions to the pool itself with anyone who's contributing a lot to the network or a lot to the pool, I should say, getting a lower fee, contributing just a little bit, your fee rate is going to go up uh, the interesting thing here is they're going to change it by quarter, depending on the pool's hash rate over the quarter. This should at the very least give Foundry a lot more revenue for the company to continue expanding, and then also might push some miners to choose other pool alternatives, but we shall see about that. Okay. Last story for the day is the shuttering of Paxful, a peer to peer Bitcoin marketplace, which has been operating since around 2017. Paxful is a beloved company with the space. Uh, much like local Bitcoins, was also shut down within the last three months. Paxful uh, was run by a co-founder and CEO, Ray Youssef, who sent out an email to all his clients and customers earlier this week saying that this will probably come as a big shock to many. I uh, cannot share the full story now. 
can say that we unfortunately have had some key staff departures. Yusuf also took note of regulatory challenges, particularly in the peer-to-peer market and in the U.S. That's according to Coindesk. Uh, the interesting he- thing here, and according to some Twitter stuff that I personally saw and some things in some Twitter spaces about around Paxful, it does seem to be some conflict between a co-founder and some key staff who decided to leave because of a back and forth with the co-founder. The thing here that is great is everyone who was using this exchange is able to withdraw their full custody of all their funds, where Yusuf, in fact, is saying that he's not going to withdraw until all other customers have successfully withdrawn their Bitcoin from the provider. Uh, the conversation now turns to what is next for the peer-to-peer space. I've talked to at least a, a few Bitcoin miners and seen some things, or, or Bitcoin, so I should say, not Bitcoin miners. I've seen some Bitcoiners talking about this. Uh, the place for peer-to-peer Bitcoin is quickly going away. Uh, local Bitcoin shut down pretty recently because of lack of liquidity and just not that many, not much volume anymore. I think Paxful probably is in a similar place. And then the regulatory V clarity definitely makes things a little bit more challenging. So I would say that this marketplace for peer-to-peer Bitcoin exchange just continues to collapse. There are some alternatives out there, but it's not great right now. These centralized exchanges are the most convenient place to get Bitcoin right now. And you're going to see continued pressure on peer-to-peer exchanges, even though they are quite useful in the meantime. Okay, that is it for the mining news roundup for this week. Thanks for listening. If you do enjoy the show, please give us a subscription on YouTube or give us a five star on your podcast listener of choice. If you got an inscription from us, go uh, send me an email because you were owed one and you did not get back to me. There's about four or five of you guys still who have not picked up your ordinals. If you did get one from me, make sure to show it on Twitter because I think that they look pretty cool. Thanks for listening. We'll see you guys soon.